Hi, Cher. How are you? Hello, Josh. How you doing? Yeah, doing great, thank you. And so excited to talk to you for this film because I had so much fun watching this one and I thought you and Tom were great together. So, so to begin with, I was wondering, what was your experience working with him like? Because the two of you just bounced off each other great in the film. I love that that's your takeaway from it. Thank you so much for, for recognizing it because we felt that the whole time. You know, um, Tom obviously comes from such a large background on screen already. And I myself, although I've been working since I was, I don't know, 10, maybe eight, you know, it gets to a point where as you do these movies, you work with people who you realize have take their own adventures and put it onto screen. And everybody has their own format of acting. We were very lucky. Tom and I really do a lot of the same type of, um, I guess you'd say, uh, motives with our acting. We felt really combined and one right from the beginning. Working with him was wonderful. He's, um, first of all, I'll tell you this much, he's a great guy. So when you're working with great people, it's really easy to enjoy it. Um, but he's just an all around great guy. Uh, he has a family, he had children around my daughter's age. It was very fun. Um, but in fa as far as the screen time together, you know, we have a very complex relationship, as you know. And it was really fun to bounce off um, the vibe of not knowing where we were gonna go with our characters as we grew into the role together and see how at the end we really were feeling each other's vibes, you know? And, uh, you know, I'm just gonna leave it at that for now because nobody else watched the film yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's a great dynamic between the characters and, you know, your character and obviously Terry is quite a complex relationship and I think it's going to surprise people. So I'm guessing that was a, a real draw to you coming into this project to, to want to explore that. Oh, I would love to tell you more about that, actually. So my character, Sphinx, is very multi-layered, as you know. Um, yeah. I like to call her a bit of a chameleon. Yes. And Right? <laughs> and with being a chameleon, you know, we obviously know what that means. She's not going to be what you expect. I mean, even from the trailer, the brilliance of our people that put together these trailers, they really don't let you understand what the heck Sphinx is doing. Um, Terry in his own is a mystery. But Sphinx is the real mystery. <laughs> um, you know, obviously, I am undercover. We'll say that much. And I'll share a fun fact with you. So as you grow in this industry, you also take on different jobs, right? That's what people do. It's the big cliche of an actor has different jobs as they grow into being a lead and a star. And when I was growing through this process, I did something real interesting. And instead of working on maybe the typical jobs you've heard of, I actually used to go undercover as a decoy. And I would do things like catch cheaters and go on excursions where I had to be a different person. And I literally am a licensed PI. And it's something I've always kept in my back corner. But when this role came about, I love the fact of sharing this with you because of your question. It's wonderful. Um, the idea of having a role that played into something that I actually did in real life was just remarkable. I couldn't say no to this one. Yeah, well, that is so interesting because Sphinx, again, I, I don't want to spoil anything because as you said, a lot of people haven't seen the film yet, but Sphinx is such an interesting character. So now knowing you know, what I know about your your history and the character. That is so interesting. And isn't that so cool? It is awesome. And something that isn't a spoiler, because we have seen it on in the trailers and on the posters, of course, you get to dress as a nun and you have a very, very cool action sequence in, in the middle of Rome. So how was it shooting that? Because I feel like that must be kind of a once in a lifetime kind of experience as an actor. I have a feeling it will definitely be once in a lifetime because I can't imagine us outside the Vatican in a nun in a priest costume too many times. <laughs> being, being Roman Catholic, I have to tell you, I, I thought it was funny, the director and the writer, um, who I happen to be very fond of, 
he he has some sense of humor. I'll give you that much because it was definitely a crowd pleaser and a crowd confusing situation when we were running around the Vatican like that. Um, shooting in Rome in itself is is something that could be a once in a lifetime. I hope it isn't because it was so beautiful to do that. You know, um, I'm obviously Italian and I've been to Italy many many times, but the idea of being able to take my craft and see the things that we did and see the way that Rome is so picturesque. I mean, I don't think there was one place you didn't look at and go, wow, that would be amazing to see. And he, they really captured everything. I mean, Scott, Scott Windhauser, the writer and director, did a wonderful job finding the places that I think everyone is going to want to see, from the Forum to outside the Vatican, um, the, the quirkiness of this movie and the the action of this movie. I mean, being a nun with a machine gun is just something I, I can never get away from wanting to talk about. It is the highlight when, when people have seen the trailer, they're like, we don't know what you're doing, but we can't wait to see more. And you know, the action in this movie, and hopefully you found that to be intriguing as well. There's a lot. Mm -hmm. I mean, this, this is nonstop. This, to me, one of the nice parts about reading a script is, and I've read so, so many now, I pick up on one thing. If it's an easy read, which is not every script, it's something I find will definitely be, especially in action, you want it to be an easy read because that means that they really got this tight. It's not gonna be something that falters. Um, and between Rome, an easy read, and that character, I mean, this was just, <laughs> this was just a dream to do this movie. Yeah, I can see it must have been a no, you know, a no brainer in that respect. And it, this is a great action project and it is, it doesn't let up. And I think that's what makes it such a fun watch that, you know, it's just nonstop from start to finish. But did, did you have any inspirations from the action world and any other actors or characters who maybe inspired what you brought to Sphinx beyond your own real life experiences that you mentioned? I, I have to be a little selfish on this one that for this one, I think it was a lot of my real life experience. I mean, this was so close to home being somebody that did this. Um, you can imagine it was unreal to, and again, I don't want to give too many spoilers, but it, it was very much, I used to say and joke all the time that when I went out undercover, it was basically an acting role. I get told what to do and I'd go out and I'd play a part. That's what it was. That's the only reason I was able to do it. I don't come from a law enforcement background or anything. I was an actor, but it was an easy slide over. And, you know, and that's what we do. That's what we do. We entertain people and we go on camera and we make you love our characters, right? And so for this type of movie, I think I was inspired really by my own real life experiences, um, which were not always so fun. I was caught in a lot of weird, bad situations at times that Maybe I didn't think about so hard at the time because I just wasn't thinking that hard about it. But, you know, similar in this movie, Sphinx gets caught in a lot of really bad situations. And she's got to figure out on the fly how to get out of them while still figuring out where her goal is in this movie. So it's, it's really um, a complex kind of dynamic. Um, I will tell you that working even with Cam, which is a lot of fun. Um, you know, I, I remembered watching him in like the Twilight series and, you know, it was fun to like see him playing this antagonistic person and seeing how he brought that character to life too. Because although my main job on this was directly with Tom nonstop, um, obviously Cam plays a huge part in what our world was. So that, that was kind of inspiring too. I think, um, I will tell you, I think for this movie, and uh, I'm obviously biased on it, but the, the three of us as leads together really tend to bounce that action drama off each other. And our, we really felt our characters. And I really do hope everybody sees that and enjoys that and really falls in love with each of us. Yeah, well, I, I think they will as someone who's seen the film. And I'm glad you mentioned Cam because you, Sphinx does get a couple of moments with him. And when I spoke to Tom, he mentioned that Cam was a real live wire to work with and, you, you know, a little bit unpredictable on set. So what was your experience working with him like? It seems like he really embraced this role and just had fun with it. He completely embraced it. I mean, there were times, you know, everybody has their own format on how they prepare during the day, which I always found interesting. Um, I, I love to see what my co 
stars do um, and see our process, I guess you would say. Um, Cam's process was deep. He, and I, I remember being with him on so many of the reads and, and just kind of catching on to his vibe and what he wanted to get out of that part. And one thing I remember that Scott had said to all of us was, go with what you want. And that was a real, that was a real gift. Um, depending upon who you're working with, and I've worked with many directors, um, some directors want to stick strictly to what they see. Some want to let you kind of try to explore a character and then they'll cut it back. And then some will let you really go. And in this particular instance, Scott was smart. He let us really go and Cam really embraced that character. I think he did wonderful. Um, it, it was really, he was a live wire. I mean, Tom, Tom definitely put it right. That was a live wire. <laughs> but it was great that we're allowed to keep that on. It actually is coming out on camera to you guys because remember all the things that you don't see. And so I'm so thrilled at what the finality of this film looks like because it was really something that's been embraced by everybody through the process of edits, et cetera, where they left all of us to be who we really felt those characters were. Yeah, that's awesome. And, you know, again, when I spoke to Tom, obviously having played Superman, I think he was really excited to come onto a movie like this and, you know, explore the criminal underworld and the mafia and, you know, drug smuggling. But what about that world really interested you and, you know, taking this deep dive again without any spoilers, but the, the role that Spinks plays in this world, because I think it's a really interesting one. Well, I'll tell you, there's a few things. Obviously, again, I'll go back, I'll go back to my nationality being Italian. I did happen to love, love always mafia movies, um, movies that were cliches. You know, I was a child actor um, in, in parts on The Sopranos, you know. It was something that I always felt really comfortable and kind of like uh, just embraced the idea of Italy and, and that world. Um, I think that that had a lot to do with it as well and something I really fell for. I fell in love with the idea that this was gonna be shot in Italy. I fell in love with the idea that it was something that was bringing um, Italy to the forefront again, but now let's do the twist. So this isn't really like a highlighted situation in Italy. This isn't really like a romantic comedy. This is the other side of Italy. This is the dark side. And I have to say, maybe that's a little bit of me, but. I'm kind of like, uh, you know, interested in that. I like the idea of the mafia underworld. I like the idea of hearing about all this. I like the idea of seeing what's going on. And the truth of the matter is, is there really is a huge situation still with things over there. This is not, you know, although our writers enhance, obviously, what the truths are, there is still this world. And obviously, drugs are a huge situation right now. The whole fentanyl craze. I mean, this is something that's real to a lot of people right now. So when you get into this movie and you see what she's actually tackling, you're going to be frightened for her because it's not small. It's really, really big. And I think that was something that really just attracted me to it, too. I mean, this was not a small project and a small task for her. I don't want small. I want big. You know, for the next film that I'm looking at, I'm looking for that type of empowerment and embracing because this allowed me to really feel like, you know, I was making an, an, a change, you know, and that's, that's where I'll leave it. But that's another thing that was intriguing about it. Just the underworld and like Italy and the mafia and, and what goes on and Costa Nosa, it's, it's the whole thing. It's so exciting. Yeah, I completely agree. And it's always fun to, you know, get a glimpse into these, these dark worlds. And I did feel after watching the movie that there's more stories maybe that could be told with Sphinx. You know, again, I don't want to spoil how that might be, but you know, we could return to her. So is this a role you would like to come back to, or do you not tend to think of sequels when you're working on, you know, on these projects? Oh no, you definitely hit the nail on the head. And in, in, again, we won't say too much right now. Maybe we could come back and talk, but um, yes, there is definitely a reason why Sphinx would be something I would entertain again, um, along with another character, uh, because those dynamics are just there. And I think there's another world she needs to go and tackle. I definitely think there's another world she has to go and tackle. So a sequel, a thousand percent. And I just want to see everybody enjoy this enough that I could go, yes, let me see that next sequel script. <laughs> 
<laughs> and let's go somewhere else fun. I mean, it would definitely not be somewhere local, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say we'd aim higher than that. <laughs> yeah, well, you've done Rome. So where would you where would you pick next? Maybe Paris or any, anywhere on your bucket list you'd like to maybe take these characters to? Because, because you know. It's... Maybe Mallorca. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> give, give me some time. I'll come up with a few more. <laughs> <laughs> and um you know i'll i'll add something fun in when you watch the film did you see that adorable little girl that played tom's niece yes yeah so that little girl is my daughter no way oh that's awesome <laughs> <laughs> that's my that's my daughter portia who's three when we shot that um oh. she's the three-year-old little girl in the movie um it was actually her very first speaking lines <laughs> and she still thinks Tom is Uncle Terry. She loves her Uncle Terry. In fact, she talks about him quite often. I mean, who else gets to have an uncle that was Superman? Yeah. <laughs> and like I said, he has children that are young. So he really embraced the fact of working with a child actor. Um, yeah, she's a baby. It was cute. It was great. She did a wonderful job. She knocked it out of the park. But um, I thought I'd share that with you because I'm very proud of her. <laughs> yeah, as you should be, because, you know, you never know with films, you know, you see some child actors and, you know, you can tell they're up and coming. But I did actually think that scene was so natural and such a nice, again, without revealing when and where it happens, but such a nice little moment in the film that really pays a lot off. So that's really cool to hear you had that personal connection. Yeah, it was it was really nice. And um, as you can imagine, it was different having a child on set in Italy, doing this film as one of the stars, you're constantly working. Um, and it was quite an experience to balance that too. So for all my actor friends out there that are balancing being a mom and leading a film, I know now what that feels like. <laughs> <laughs> And it's definitely something that is interesting. It was a success and I'll do it again over and over. And she was brilliant on set. So it worked out great. <laughs> but between the language barriers, you can imagine, Josh, <laughs> and the fact that I had this child there with me, it was really interesting. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, a, a challenge, I would say it definitely paid off, you know, because the film comes together great. And just one final question for you, Cher. You know, what, what is it you love about this action genre? Because like I said, I think this is such a great, you know, it's a 90 minute action film. It doesn't let up. I think people are going to watch it and they're just going to get hooked and they're just going to love these characters. But what do you love about these, these action movies like this one and just being part of it as well? That they go fast, that they have speed to them and that they also have depth to them. Um, again, I'll share with you something. Uh, I've worked in all different genres of film and I have fallen in love with many of them. Um, romantic comedies with The Wild Wedding. Um, I've fallen in love with some of the TV series I've been on. I like something that has an edge to it for sure, but there's also something about this specific film um, that gravitated to me when it was action. And that was something more that I think really came from working with Scott again. I had worked with him on um, Death in Texas. Mm. Uh, if you follow the director and writer's format, you'll see that he is a brilliant action writer, but he tends to bring in some heart into all his films. It's Although there's tons of explosives and you're not gonna be able to get your eyes off of this, his films work very fast to get through at the same time they have depth of heart and they have some storyline that's going to drag you in and really make you embrace these characters that's not always the case with action films so i won't say that it was always my favorite genre i think really i started to embrace action more when i started catching on to writers that i enjoyed the work of i think that's really something more that i'm learning from this now um, so as an actor, I embrace all different types of scripts that I read, but when they are action, if they have more depth to them, I feel like that's something that draws me closer to them because it allows me to explore a side of me that brings a character's emotion in while I'm kicking ass. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I will add, Josh, because we didn't bring it up, but I will say this was a family affair because as I speak highly of our director and our writer, he is my husband. 
Well, that's great, though. I, I think that's great. And to know that your daughter was part of it as well. I mean, how cool is that? And what an experience for the three of you to share on what I it think was. is a really fun movie. And one of the coolest posters of the year as well. I think seeing you and Tom, an actor who used to play Superman on, on that poster in those costumes with the guns, I think what a cool piece of imagery as well. So I think you need to get that one up on the wall next. Oh, I, I can't wait to get that one up on the wall. There's a few hanging up behind me. We have another room that we put a bunch of our posters in, but I do have to say, my, mine's going in the front. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one the best, but I'm glad you picked up on all that. Good job with our PR, I'll tell you that much, because there were tons of things they could have grabbed, and uh, I have to agree with them. The nun with the machine guns, I, I you can't go wrong, and, and Tom... Tom playing a different role after he was so well known only with Smallville. I think this is really going to be something that, like you said, a sequel might be in order because I think people are going to really be drawn into the characters and want to see more. They're going to want to see more. And I'm so happy that you got the takeaway you did from the film. Thanks, Josh. No, well, thank you. And congrats on the movie. And yeah, I certainly hope it's the start of a new action franchise because I'd like to revisit these characters. So Cher, thank you so much for your time. It's been so much fun speaking to you. Thank you so much. And thank you for all the great stories as well. I really appreciate it. No problem. Hey, Josh, just do me a favor. If you want to hear more about my stories on the film, I'm going to be talking about them on my podcast that I have. With oh, It's yeah. called Speaking Volumes with Sharon Scary. You can find that on any platform. We also do a Zoom on my Instagram, which is at, at Sherrick Casenza. And, uh, you know, I just want to make that available to all our fans so that they have questions, they could always reach out. Of course, yeah. Well, I'll make sure I get your Instagram, your podcast. That'll be all, all in our interview piece. So, yeah, don't worry. That sounds great. Thank you so much. Josh, thanks for your time. You too. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye.